gone through all the factory Polaris tracks. What if you don't want a factory Polaris track? What if you don't like the way they perform? You think they don't last as long? Um, what are the options for aftermarket tracks? So we're gonna go, we're gonna talk about the most common aftermarket tracks I see, because there's so many, there's just no way I can go over all of them. And uh, so we'll give you some options. The two main companies that make aftermarket tracks are Composite and Camoplast, which is now CamSnow. CamSnow also makes almost all of the factory tracks that you see here, BRP, Articat and uh, Polaris. Camsnow pretty much makes tracks for all those manufacturers. And so we're gonna, let's look at the aftermarket tracks. If you don't want a Polaris track, what you can uh, put on your Polaris snowmobile in place of your factory Polaris track. All right, so these are our four main aftermarket tracks we're gonna look at. First one we're gonna talk about, Articat Power Claw track. It's been a really popular track for a long time. Comes in a three inch and a 2.6 inch lug. It's a really good track. And honestly, in my opinion, probably one of the best factory three inch tracks out there. The problem with this track is three inch pitch, not really compatible with the matrix sleds that are three and a half inch pitch, unless you want to change your drivers. It's a 162, which is harder to get to fit in a sled if you have a 165. And also since they haven't really made sleds with the, with the 162 dual rail, we call it, that aren't alpha, it's becoming harder and harder to find these. And so I'm not gonna talk about these very much. In the three inch pitch, three inch lug, power claw track, 54 pounds. But actually it was a really good track for a long time. I think you're probably gonna see people use it less and less. But if, if you want a really good three inch track, you can't really go wrong with the power claw. We're gonna skip the composite tracks. And we're gonna talk about those last because a little bit more to talk about. The next one we're gonna talk about are the Cam Snow tracks. Manufacturers track, they make BRP tracks, Polaris tracks, Articat tracks. They make lots of other tracks, um, agriculture tracks and everything. Pretty much the, the has been the biggest um, power sports track manufacturer we've had until composite came along and started um, getting tracks here in the US six or seven years ago. But Cam Snow makes a number of different tracks if you want to replace something on your Polaris snowmobile. The one you see probably recommended the most common if you want a three inch track is called the X3. It's, so the X3 is a three inch lug track, has a really nice um, lug profile. It's a fully clipped track. So it's a little heavier for, for what it is. It weighs 57 pounds in the 155 version. Um, three inch pitch, three inch lug. Um, so again, a three inch pitch track. If you're putting this on a Matrix, you're gonna have to change your drivers. But this is probably one of the most highly recommended cam snow tracks um, to replace on the snowmobile. If you have an older Polaris, uh, up, really up until they had the Matrix, make sure you get a track with this hole in the center if you're gonna use the center drive sprockets. Um, if you have a newer, a newer sled like the Matrix, it doesn't use these to drive, so you don't really need that hole if you're gonna get a track like this one, you don't need that hole there. But um, great company, they have a number of different options. But that's the most commonly recommended track I see for Polaris's is this one right here. Track, uh, the BRP versions of, there's a, quite a few of them. Cam Snow's been making a three inch track for Skidoo since 2018, that when the 850 first came out, and there's been quite a few different versions of this. Originally, they were all 16 inches wide, meaning 16 inches from there to there. That doesn't fit on Polaris snowmobiles. So if you get a 16 inch wide track, you're gonna have to have the ends just cut down. Or there's some versions now that you can get that come on the Export or on some of the Lynx snowmobiles that are 15 inches wide. But there's also another version, since Cam Snow makes this track for BRP, they make a version of it called, which is what this track is, it's called the 300LX. It's a three inch tall lug track. It comes in a three and a half inch pitch, so you don't have to change your drivers if you're gonna put this on a Matrix. Last year it only came in one version, a 16 wide, which was 49 pounds for a 155. They actually came out with a new version of this this year you can buy in a 15 inch wide, so you don't have to have it cut. That I think is gonna be probably one of the better aftermarket tracks to put on your Polaris. Um, I used this track all last year, it's kind of funny, you can see this, you can see this little piece of wood that's kind of stabbed all the way through that lug there. 300 LX or the BRP 15 inch wide tracks are a really good option for your Polaris. All right, the last track manufacturer we're gonna talk about is Composite. They're a little bit newer to the snowmobile scene here in the US. They've only been selling tracks here for about six or seven years. So let's look at them. They have a number of different tracks for Polaris and uh, Skidoo's. And they have, they've been getting more and more popularity in the last four or five years. You see them, a lot of people use them. Probably the most commonly recommended track when you get on social media 
is the composite tracks. We're going to go over some of the different tracks they have and also some of the things that make them a little bit different from the other track manufacturers. So um, the first thing you're going to notice is all the composite tracks weigh a little bit more than the other tracks. That's because they're made a little bit differently. They're made, all the other tracks that you've seen here, all the Polaris factory tracks, all these other aftermarket tracks are single ply. What that means is the belt part of the track here is only made with one ply of rubber Kevlar cord and then one ply of rubber and so it makes this part thinner on a single ply track. This is what's called a multi-ply track. We used to make all of our tracks like this until we started getting more into weight savings. This can actually, the multi-ply track like this can actually make your track a um, little bit more durable. It absorbs heat a little bit better when you have heat coming in through the track clips um, and it's not going to tear or get damaged as easily. And as you see, can see, if we measure this, we'll measure this one just over 10 millimeters. And if we come over here to a single ply track, it's a bit thinner, just over seven millimeters thick there. This is a new track for them, came out the, towards the end of last year. It's called the, the M70. It is a 2.7 lug track. It's quite a different lug design than a lot of the other. Got the, our ribs here on the back. Got the nice thick corners here. So one of the things that the power claw track had, the, they got the power claw name because it's got this claw kind of here on the outside that really helps you grip the snow, especially when you're side hilling and cutting through an edge. Kind of did a similar thing here with this more of a claw or a nub out here on the end of these lugs. So I'm going to be putting this track on my boost and running it this next weekend, kind of see how it compares with the 275 lug track I had from Polaris and then the two or the three and quarter lug track I had on Polaris last weekend. So. In the 155 version, it's 57 pounds and a three and a half inch pitch. And so I think it's going to be a really popular track to replace the Polaris 2.75 track. Let's go over to the TV screen now. We're just going to go over a little bit on their website and come the other tracks they have. All right, so if we go over to the TV screen, so if you put in uh, composite track, you're going to get this one. This is the one you want, the composite snowmobile tracks has this little American flag. If you go on the website, you're going to get this. You're going to get the little American flag up here. That lets you know you're in the U.S. website and you can start searching for what a mountain tracks you want. They have tracks by brand. They also have tracks by size. So we're going to look in this 155 version here. The main tracks you're going to see, you're going to see four mountain tracks. You're going to see the M66, the M67. Those are both 2.6 inch lug height tracks made for a little bit different types of riding. To the M66, a little bit stiffer lug and a little bit different lug design, made more, a little bit more for lower elevations, a little bit stiffer snow. The M67 is more of the deep snow powder track you're going to want if you're riding out in the western U.S. The other two tracks they had, the one we already mentioned, the, M, the M70, the 2.75 lug track, and then the big dog, the, the three inch lug track is the M770. Remember the 770 is in millimeters, so if you divide that out you get about three inch lug for this track. If we go in here and we click on the three inch lug track, it's what a lot of uh, mountain riders want. Really a nice track design. You get these cup lugs. If you have a Polaris, you have the center window. If you're using the older style Polaris center extrovert driver, you can get these tracks in a number of different versions on the three of lug type. And we have anywhere from 153 out to 175 length. We have, five, we have 15 inch wide tracks. We have 16 inch wide tracks. Uh, if you have Skidoo, and they all, and so a number of different options from composite if you want a deep snow track for your Polaris. It's really nice that they give you a lot of different options, both in sizes and in lug height, and they're priced pretty well too, as far as their price point for a replacement track. This is the 155 version of their three inch lug track, just a little over thousand dollars. You're going to have shipping depending where you're at in the country. Um, you're going to also have sales tax. So. Really phenomenal tracks, gaining a lot of popularity here in the in the U.S. and Canada. We're going to talk a little bit now about how tracks work and deep powder, a couple of things that we always hear people talk about, and then we're going to talk about track durability. So first thing we're going to talk about, I call, kind of call this my deep snow track triangle. The top of this is ground speed. This is really how fast your snowmobile is moving across the snow. It has nothing to do with what your speedometer says because you can be moving 10 miles an hour in deep snow and your speedometer says you're going 40 miles an hour. And what that 40 miles an hour shows on your speedometer, since that's what is showing what your track and your drive shaft is turning, that's your track speed. 
So the track speed can vary differently from ground speed, just depending on what kind of snow conditions you're in. If you're on flat ground or going across the lake, they're probably going to be pretty similar or almost the same. The other thing that really contributes to ground speed is traction. How deep lugs you have, what kind of snow conditions you're in can really affect how much traction your snowmobile gets to propel you forward to create ground speed. So these two things, traction and track speed, really are the two main components that contribute to ground speed. There's a number of other things that kind of fit in these things, how well your clutching is working, if your RPMs on your engine are where they're supposed to be, um, your engine performance, your engine condition, if uh, the compression's down, your engine's not um, working very well, you're not going to have very good ground speed or track speed. Snow conditions can really affect how your track performs. If you have really um, warm, thick spring type snow or if you have like the t two feet of new powder dump in that you see in Utah and Colorado, those two things can really affect how your track um, gets traction, your track speed and eventually your ground speed. And then track length can also affect this and also how long your lugs are on your track. Then approach angle can really affect um, the track speed as well too because your approach angle is the angle of how your track comes off your drivers down to the front of your rails and that angle there can really vary from sled to sled if the angle is really shallow you're going to climb up on the snow a little bit faster and not trench as much if you have a real steep track angle like we used to have in the in the sleds 20 25 years ago when we were doing drop and roll chain cases and stuff to help fix it um, that can really affect how your sled performs in deep snow. But anyway, the two main things, traction and track speed. I really see a lot of these people getting in these pissing matches on social media and before social media really happened on uh, internet forums over the years where all they talk about is track speed. You know, if you have seven mile an hour track speed, you have the fastest sled in deep snow. But that's not really not always the case because I can put an inch and a half lug track that's 144 inches on my Polaris Boost, and I could probably easily get 70, 75 mile an hour track speeds, but I'm not gonna have the traction to create the ground speed I need to climb very good hills and stuff. So track speed and traction really combine to really create your ground speed, whether you're hill climbing, whether you're going through the trees, because if you're moving through the trees, boondocking through the trees, you really need to keep your ground speed up to a, some level, depending on how tight the trees are, and have enough traction that when you hit the gas, you, your sled moves and gets on top of the snow and keeps moving. And you're not gonna be creating a ton of ground or track speed in the trees just because you're kind of on and off throttle a bit, uh, depending again how tight the trees are. So these two things can really affect ground speed. Like if I, like the newest track Polaris has is a three and a quarter track. Um, you have a ton of traction with that. On a turbo, it's really good because you can really create some pretty good track speed with it. So you have to really kind of pick your track for your riding conditions, how you like to ride. If you're just kind of going and playing in meadows or if you're someone who's getting really deep in the woods, um, side hill and in and out of pine trees and that kind of stuff, you, there's really different tracks that people like and perform differently for those types of things. And just before we leave track speed, there's one other thing I want to talk about because I see people ask quite a few times a year on different forums and uh, internet websites as far as what people are running for track speed. And don't get caught up in that because you always get the one guy that everyone has the same snowmobile. We'll use a 24 Boost, for example. Someone will ask what the track speeds are, and you always get the one guy that says he's got 70 mile an hour track speeds, which you know really isn't possible on a deep snow machine on a given hill uh, unless you're producing like 12 pounds of boost and making, you know, 250, 280 horsepower. It's just not going to happen on a hill if you're really being honest and where, depending on where you're checking your track speed. So if you've got a hill that has a flat running like this and kind of climbs up like this and say this hill goes a thousand feet vertical, I mean, you're going to have a lot of time getting your sled from the bottom to the top and you're not going to maintain the same track speed down here as you're going to have up here, especially if the snow on this on this hill is a foot or two feet deep. So you really got to kind of decide where you're going to check your track speed at. Down here at the bottom, you might be able to get 55, 60 mile an hour track speeds if you have a Polaris boost. But once you start climbing the hill, gravity is going to start pulling you down. The deep snow is going to start pulling your track speed down. Down here, your 55 miles an hour might go down to 50. Mid hill, it might be in mid to upper 40s. And right here, if you if you have enough to crest the hill, or some people, if you power out right here, you might only be getting a ground speed of four or five miles an hour clear up here. Track speed's probably down in the 30s, and you're and it's just tough to, to decide 
where you measure your track speed at. I mean, because depending on where you are on this curve on this hill, you could have track speeds, like I said, from 60 miles an hour to 50 to 40. If you have a normally elastic sled, you might be down here in the 45 when you're at the bottom of the hill. Mid hill, you might even be down to 35 and up here, 30 to 25. So don't get caught up in the track speed stuff if you see it on the internet. What's really important for you, if you're making changes on your sled with clutching, with your track, what's the track speed for your particular snowmobile? If your clutching is good, your RPMs, or where they're supposed to be, your engine is in the top working condition, and you make a change on your sled. If you're on the same hill one day and you're getting 45 miles an hour track speed right here in the middle, you make a change, you come back a week later, you change, let's say you change clutching, and right here getting 48 mile an hour track speeds, it's pretty much same snow condition, same hill, that's a pretty good improvement. Uh, so really kind of watch your own track speeds, your own, how your engine's performing. Watching your speedometer and your RPMs on your sled on any ride can really help you know what your snowmobile is doing and how well it's performing. And if it changes from one ride to another, you know there might be a problem or something you need to change or something might be worn. You might have a broken clutch spring or something. All right, let's move on now to track damage. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this, but just going to cover a couple little topics. I think they're probably the most common things that cause track damage. First thing that's gonna cause track damage is heat in your track. And like people are gonna ask, well, how do you get heat in your track? Main thing's going down trails that are super icy. You're not getting enough snow and ice on your track to cool it. Uh, what happens is the bottom of your rail, you have a piece of plastic like this. This is a high piece of a Hyfax um, that goes on the bottom of your rail. Then you have a little track clip like this. It's metal that goes on your track. As you're going on the trail, these are all constantly rubbing on each other. Cause it causes a lot of friction here, a lot of heat. You've been going down the trail before, probably when you hear someone smells like they're burning plastic. That's because what they're doing, this is getting so hot that it's melting the plastic on here. To melt this plastic, you have to get it really hot, over a couple hundred degrees. And so what's happening if you get rubber over a couple hundred degrees? Well, that heat is going to absorb into this track clip and into what's behind it. And so what's behind it is your track, your fiberglass rods, and your lug. If you're having lug problems right underneath the track clips, it's probably because you're going down the trail combination of too fast and with not enough lubrication on your track, heating this up. If you've ever run a belt temperature gauge, some ski, some ski dudes have them. A lot of people are putting them now on their side by sides. If you start getting the, your belt over 180 degrees or so, what's going to happen? The, the fibers in the that hold that belt together the rubber is going to degrade the glue is going to start to degrade what happens the belt's going to start to come apart if you get it too hot a snowmobile track is very similar to a snowmobile belt it's held together by all the same stuff um, if you start getting too much heat into this it's going to degrade all the rubbers and glues and everything that hold this lug on right here where the track clip is and you're going to start losing lugs right under where the track clip is so be really careful when you go down the trails stop and kick up snow on your track just make sure you're not getting so hot that your high fax is melting all right let's go on to the next thing it's hard if you're a mountain rider to avoid stuff that's under the snow if you like to early season ride just don't early season ride or if you want to early season ride what i do is i put an old junk track on my new sleds and early season ride so i can beat the piss out of them and i don't care this is a 2.6 track that i put on my uh, 9r early season this year it's missing a number of lugs and uh so that's one of the things that I do. With a belt drive sled, it's so fast to, to a, change a track out. This is a picture I took about five years ago. This was like in the end of February, early March. We had seven or eight feet of snow up in the mountains and I'm carving on my axis. We're probably about 10,000 feet. I've gone down this little drop, curved around and I come up and I came up with skis in the air, spinning the track up this little rise and turned around. And I turned around and looked where I had come up and there was this giant pointed rock right in the middle of my track. I didn't even feel it. And so I'm like, oh, I hit something like that. I didn't even feel it. Let's take a look at this. There's my ski where I stopped and turned. And if you take a look, there's this giant. I mean, it was like perfectly situated to really just tear apart my track, this pointed rock right in the middle that I never felt it. I never remember hitting it. Maybe because I was having so much fun, I wasn't paying enough attention. But sad part is that was my first ride on a brand new track I had put on this sled. Um, it was a new camo class track. Rolled my sled over its side, and by hell, 
I was missing three paddles right in the middle hill, right exactly where that rock was. So we're going to hit stuff. It's going to be unavoidable. You can try and avoid it as much as you want. You want to stay down the flat areas. But if you get up into the trees where there's going to be logs and stumps and rocks and stuff where it's, and drainages where it's super fun to ride, you're going to dig down and you're going to hit stuff. Eventually, you're going to lose lugs. All right, now we're going to finish up this video. Um, we have our two aftermarket tracks here that I don't have on sleds right now, the composite 2.75 inch track, uh, Camso X3 track, um, both really good tracks. The composite M70 track was a new track for me this year, hadn't used it. I had seen it last, the end of last year in the summer. I had this on my Polaris Boost for about three, four rides earlier in the year. Also had it on my 9R. I was really impressed by this track. I really liked it. If you want a 2.75 inch track and you're trying to change out your Polaris 2.75 track, you don't want a three inch track, really good track. The only downside of it's a little bit heavier than some of the other tracks if weight is a big issue for you. Most of it's, it's we're not trying to make the ultimate lightweight sled. So composite M70, really good track. I haven't used the M77 yet, the three inch track. If you're gonna, if you have a matrix, you have a three and a half inch pitch, you don't want to change your driver size. It's really hard not to use the Camso 300 LX. It's a really good deep powder track. Like I said before, it's kind of a copy. It's Camso's copy of the, what the track they produce for uh, BRP. Nice thing about it, three and a half inch pitch will fit right in your snowmobile and a uh, really good three inch lug. I'm still kind of a trade off whether I like the three inch lug better or Polaris's new three and a quarter. Three and a quarter seems to trench a little bit more and it's got so much traction, your front end's always coming up and you gotta adjust your uh, suspension kind of around that to help with that. Hope this has been helpful for you to see what tracks are out there, what your choices are, and to help you make a good choice in a track. Have a safe winter on the snow this year and hopefully we're getting more snow. It's been a pretty dismal year for snow, nothing like last year where you're setting records left and right in snow years out west. We'll see you next time at Mountain Slitter Garage.